listening to Professor Lumumba, I, 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 I'm kind of amazed by the points he raised. Let me try by saying this. Professor Lumumba started by lamenting about how Africa has failed. I listened to him very attentively, waiting to hear when he is going to talk something good about Africa. I did not hear that. Professor Lumumba continued to say, Africa, we are unprepared for COVID-19. The question is, were Africa really unprepared for COVID-19? The answer is yes. Africa, we are unprepared, very unprepared for COVID-19. Another issue and a very critical point he raised was that no single Africa country that has not been ravaged by COVID-19. Is this particular position true? The answer is yes. But then, when you compare what has happened in Africa to what happens in some of the countries in Europe, it is not comparable. Italy was ravaged and people died like chicken in Italy during the outbreak of COVID-19. We have not witnessed the level of ravageness in Africa, like what happened in Italy. Now, I am driving at a point by making these two first uh, point that first of all, why did Lumumba think that Africa were unprepared? Any day we answer this question, Africa will begin to see development. Another thing is that Professor Lumumba, a well-respected professor, he said Africans are beggars. Uh, during the COVID-19, we saw different African countries begging and begging. And whether this is true, the answer is yes, they begged. Another thing is, who are Africa begging from? Who are they begging from? They are begging from the people that take their natural resources. So who are they going to, what are they going to give to Africa? They give to Africa what was stolen from them. It's stolen. The natural resources and money taken from Africa. Africa will turn back and beg. Another question is, do we as Africa understand why we are beggars? Any day we answer this question, we are going to be free and become a developed continent. And I'm going to tell you solutions today. Now, he mentioned also, how he asked the question, he asked, where are all the educated Nigerians? Where are all the educated Ghanaians? Where are they who studied in Harvard and all what have you? The question is, do you see those people who studied in Harvard in any government offices in Africa? Let us use Nigeria, for example. The answer is no. Now, the question is, why? Why you are not seeing those people that studied in Harvard living in affairs of African countries? I'm going to use Nigeria as a case study. And I'm going to tell you today why. Again, Professor Lumumba mentioned that where are these people who studied in Harvard medical schools when Cuba can produce and manufacture vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine? The same question is, do you know, Professor Lumumba, the reason why Cuba can manufacture and produce vaccine, why the people from Africa who studied in Harvard cannot do the same thing? I am going to give you the answer. You may not agree with me, but I said, Today will be the beginning of a healthy discussion on Africa. And we hope we are going to have a very objective discussion. Professor Lumumba also said this is a wake-up call for Africa. And I agree with him, 120%. He went further to say if Africa unites, that Africa is going to be a great continent to lead the world. I agree with him. The question now is how will Africa unite? And another question is, why haven't Africa united by 2021? Another question is, why are there so many crises in all, almost all Africa countries? And number four question is, why do you have so many terrorist organizations and groups working freely, killing people in African nations? Now, we can never understand where the problem is coming from. We can never understand the solution or know the solution to this problem unless we know the source of the problem. Cuba is not a rich country, but Cuba have a very well advanced health system. In Cuba, you have one of the best doctors in the world. In Cuba, I do not know whether Professor Lumumba is aware of that. However, the problem of Africa is we are 
to devise what we call the diversity is the problem of Africa. I want to also put it to everybody watching us today that nobody has been able to actually conduct a thorough and a, a well investigated research, medical research on how this COVID-19, how it could affect black Africans, not black America, but black Africans. Do we have any kind of different journey that the COVID-19 not be actually very effective to bring down the immune system of black Africans. Nobody has been able to research on that. And the question is why? Because Africa cannot do it. Africa do not have the possibility to conduct research to know how COVID-19 could affect the immune system of Africans and compare it to how it could affect the white, the Europeans, Indians, and what have you. We do not have that kind of medical record. If we compare the ravage of COVID-19 in a country like Italy, what we saw, the pattern of COVID-19 were to happen in Nigeria. We will be looking at 100 million people dying because there is no medical equipment. Nigeria begged and they even begged the CEO of Tesla to give them uh, some of the medical equipment during the outbreak of COVID-19. So, after having highlighted some of the interesting points raised by our professor, I would want to tell him today the reason why Africa were unprepared for COVID-19 and they will never be prepared. The reason is this. Africa have a very dangerous diversity starting from Nigeria. And we needed a nation to drive or to be the lead of Africa's civilization. The diversity in some of the African countries are very dangerous diversity. Remember, when you say dangerous diversity, it is really very dangerous one. Because diversity has never worked anywhere in the world. When you make reference to the European Union, one important thing Professor Mumba said also is that how can a country of 2 million be able to produce COVID-19 vaccine? And that is a surprise to him. How could a country of 2 million we are able to produce COVID-19 vaccine. But countries like large countries in Africa could not do it. The answer to this question is very simple. The place you see that you have 2 million people in that country and they were able to produce this COVID-19 vaccine means that there is no dangerous diversity in that country of 2 million people. And the Africans should start to think towards this direction. We need to divide our diversity to be able to unite Africa. Without disintegrating the diversity in Africa, Africa can never ever be united. We need to pieces Africa. After pieces in Africa, we begin to come together for the unity and we we'll eventually become the power of the world. Why did I say this? I am saying this because this is what is obtainable in the Western world today. This is what is obtainable in America. This is what is obtainable in Europe. When you have a collapse, unworkable system, you can never manage any outbreak of any disease. You will not have any workable health equipment. You will not have a functional health sector. And like you rightfully said, the African people were unprepared for COVID-19 and they can never be prepared in 200 years to come which the dangerous diversity we have in nigeria for example you will agree agree with me that some of the people that piloted the covid 19 in america were nigerians in fact a yoruba man was the leader the lead research of covid 19 in the us do you know why nigeria cannot get it because the person that studied in harvard or studied in one of the best universities in the world, you can't see them in Africa because the people that are governing Africa country, most of them have ulterior motive. The ulterior motive is ethnic, religious, and cultural driven. And that is the reason why we say it is time to divide along. So when you listen to people who are educated, who have lived in the Western world, saying we need to come together our diversity is our strength. And then I ask them a question. Can you tell us example anywhere in the world 
where the diversity has actually brought development and civilization. If you are able to give us one example of a country that has a very dangerous diversity and they were able to progress, we are going to listen to you. But as I speak today, the second day of July 2021, there is no country that has diversity not to talk about the dangerous one that are progressing. Europe divided along tribal line. Every country in Europe, they speak their language, they have their culture. The only ethnic group is the political party. The United Kingdom is a kingdom. It's a kingdom united. Different kingdom united under one queen, under one king, under one kingdom. They have different culture, different languages, different governments, and they divided along tribal line because they try to form a very strong force with their diversity and it didn't work. They fought war, very deadly and very, very brutal war, bloody war in England. Today, they are enjoying the dividends of dividing along tribal line. That's why you have a United Kingdom. It's a kingdom with different government, Wales, England, Ireland, Scottish, all these people are different. That's what we are asking, that if you want Africa to progress, if you want the second COVID-19, like you said, the coming of the second COVID-19, not to ravage Africa and kill our people. We need to start now to lay the foundation of becoming one of the powerful continents in the world. How do we do that? We have to start to educate our people, channel our energies in preaching Biafra, Nigeria disintegration, because from there, we are going to lead the way for Africa freedom. Africa is not free. We cannot have all these natural resources. We cannot be blessed with all manner of natural resources. And our professors, our doctors recognize the fact that we are better. It's very absurd. We know how we, what we are going to do and how we cease from begging. Africa have what it takes for people to beg from Africa. And this will not happen until the diversity that is destroying Nigeria and Africa is divided. The diversity in the sense that when you have people who are competent, who are educated, who are very conversant in handling health issues, you will not see them in the affair of the government. The government have ulterior motive. In Nigeria today, biggest problem of Nigeria is the diversity. The diversity in Nigeria is a very dangerous one. You have cultural diversity, you have religious diversity, you have tribal diversity, and bringing all this diversity together, you are not looking at a progressive Nigeria. Rather, everybody that comes to the affair of the government will try to drive ethnic, either ethnic, religious, or tribe. You are first Yoruba before in Nigeria. You are first a Muslim before accepting the secular state in Nigeria. You are first a Nutana, a, a Spulani before in Nigeria. You are first a Biafran before in Nigeria. And any time a Biafran finds himself in the position, he would want to favor the Biafra people. Any time a Yoruba finds himself in the position, he would want to favor the Yoruba people. Any time the Fulani find themselves in position, he goes beyond borders to bring the entire Fulanis from all over Africa into Nigeria. Some of them today have built dynasty in Nigeria. They are the one telling us who to leave Nigeria and who not to leave Nigeria. And when you think about what to do for the development and progressive of Nigeria, they tell you we are at number you. We are bigger than you. They tell you it is a question of number. They tell you this is democracy. We have more people at the National Assembly than you. When you tell them to restructure Nigeria so that Nigeria can progress, have blood, have good hospital, people can be employed out of competency, they tell you go and contest election in your local government. They are not interested in anything that will move Nigeria forward. Let me also make it very clear that what I'm preaching today along ethnic and tribal line, Nigeria has tried it. Nigeria practiced it. It worked. It worked that during the early days, Yoruba people have their own embassy in the United Kingdom. They are recognized. They have their consulate. They have their passport. They have their currency. 
They have their own wealth. Economy was booming. The Afro people enjoyed the same The Northern people enjoyed the same thing. And only this can make Africa move forward. You need to start at a final point. You need a country that will be a final point for the progressive of Africa. You need a country that will be a cardinal point for other Africa to emulate. At this point, every country in Africa has failed. Like you rightfully said, that all African countries have failed. You exempted only one African country. We have tried to manage the COVID-19, but we do not want to continue managing. And remember what I said, nowhere, anywhere in the world that you have diversity bringing civilization in that country. I do not need to go further to start giving professor what happened in Europe, what happened in Soviet Union, what happened in America, and how America is not in diversity. Because America has one single law. America, even all the states are divided, but America is found in Christianity. And I told people who argue that America has diversity, I told them that I disagree with you. Do not use America to give example of a, diverse, a diversified country. Because America, any day Islam, any day Sharia is implemented in America, then I will agree with you that America have now embraced diversity.